right, everybody. So the time has come. It is tonight that I will paint the car. You can see I have it all taped off, masked off. I got bumpers, fenders, uh, the trunk piece. I have the rest of the car is all taped off and ready to go. I have a few cut throughs, but I don't think it's going to be too big of an issue. Um, and I got some areas that I primed that I went through to metal. But I think it's going to be fine. I think I got to stop obsessing and just paint this car already. It's been driving me crazy. It's looking really good. The bodywork is going to be pretty nice. Um, only I'll know where the flaws are. I'm not going to show you. <laughs> Maybe you'll see them anyway. But uh, yeah, I'm really stoked. It's going to come out really good, I think. As long as we have good adhesion, which I can't see why we wouldn't. Uh, we're going to have a really good result here. So I got everything all ready. All I really need to do now is go through and mix my paint. So I'm going to take this paint and pour it into these two containers here. And then I'm going to take my full gallon of reducer. I have a full gallon of this stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and split it in between the two. And uh, that's going to be our one to one mix ratio. And we're going to go ahead and go back and forth on the cans a little bit to make sure that it's all about the same. And uh, then after that, we should be all mixed up and know that everything is legitimate. It's all the correct color. It's all the same. And then we can begin spraying. No matter how much paint it takes, it's not going to take all two gallons that I'm going to end up making. So we're going to go ahead and just lay it on. Um, I'm not sure on my process yet. I think that I'll probably do the car itself first before I do the other panels. Um, and I'll probably tack rag. I'm thinking, I don't know, it might, it might take too long to tack rag everything in between and all that. So I think what I'll do is I'll just tack rag it all at once. And then I'll come in and I'll do my base coat. My first coat's going to be like a nice light coat. Um, not full coverage, but just to get it on everything. And uh, give us a nice base to build off of. And then I'm going to do uh, a second coat. That's like a medium wet coat. And then I'll probably do a drop coat. And then I'm going to come through after those have all flashed off and see um, if I need to do another coat for coverage or what. See if I should do another medium wet coat and then I'll have to do another drop coat. So that will end up being quite a bit of paint. I don't think that I want to do that. So I'm going to try to make sure that my, second, my first and second coats cover pretty good. So I might do like a medium coat on the first coat. Just because I really would like to cover this in three coats with the third coat being the drop coat. So I'm going to pull my uh, spray gun back a little bit and hold it out for a little bit longer and just make sure the metallic kind of falls on and that's kind of how you want to do that drop coat. And then I'm going to go ahead and let it all flash and then I'm going to tack rag everything and then I'm going to go ahead and spray the clear and I think I'm going to go for three coats. I think three coats should be plenty. Uh, plenty enough for me to have more to sand through because I'm going to wet sand and buff everything obviously because I want it to be ultra flat. So that is in the works. But uh, yeah, for now, we're just going to um, get started uh, mixing paint and wax and grease remove everything. I'll throw it on time lapse again. But uh, we're pretty much ready, guys. We just got to get these last final pushes in here. And then uh, we can go ahead and get the airflow started in the booth. It's 79 in here, but I know it's way hotter in the attic where I have my whole filter set up here sucking from. Um, and I have this whole door sealed off. So I'm going to go ahead and shut that door and uh, we have our nice little booth set up in here. So I have my fresh air respirator. My hose is coming from the other room there where I have a leaf blower blowing air into my face shield here. So hopefully that works as uh, it did before when I painted in the past because it did pretty well for me. So I'm excited guys. This is uh, what I've been waiting a long time for. I still have more parts to paint, but I can't fit everything in the garage at once and it'll be okay if I uh, do another phase of painting. So I'm not sure if I'll uh, uh, do all the handles and stuff. I think I might try to do the mirrors um, maybe and, and handles as well tonight. I'm not really sure. I'm going to see what I can fit out here on my table. and Because I would really like to put the car back together after this. Um, after wet sanding and buffing and then slap the car back together. I think it would be really sweet to get it all done like that. But we'll see what it ends up... Uh, what ends up happening, I'm going to get done as much as I can tonight. I really just need to see this car painted. So hopefully you guys feel the same way. And uh, it's been a long time coming. So yeah, let's get some paint on this thing. 
so right here is what I was doing with the first coat um, I wanted to get not necessarily full coverage but uh, I did want to get decent coverage enough so that my second coat along with my drop coat would cover um, and I you can see I I tried to move quickly in the beginning I was kind of rushing I wasn't sure how my fresh air respirator system was actually going to work uh, being that this is only the second time I've used it and uh, we had different batteries this time and uh, my dad's actually in the other room you can see the hose coming out in the bottom left corner there um, but that is actually from the other room and I am breathing air from the other room and it's constantly being forced into my mask and that positive pressure is what keeps the paint fumes from coming in even when I inhale um, there's still positive pressure in the mask the leaf blower is pretty strong and it's brushless so I'm not breathing in the uh, motor uh, arcs or anything like that so it is safe at least I believe so but you see me putting the paint on the car I ended up doing the other pieces first and then uh, doing the car after I just wanted to get a feel for it and I learned some things I mainly kept getting tangled in the hose there which uh, was just inevitable uh, when you carry around two hoses that come from different areas. I think next time maybe I'll uh, connect the hoses in some sort of way um, that I can keep them together or something like that. But this is just a big job and it's very tough to work and maneuver around a vehicle with all that hose there. But I tried to make do. Uh, anyway, yeah, I had to keep, uh, keep pouring more paint. I had a small cup size, so I just kept going back to it and kept getting more and uh, overall I was a little worried after the first coat just because I thought that uh, it didn't cover the best but that's just how the first base coat uh, usually goes but uh, yeah so now I just gave it a little bit of flash time and uh, I'll be able to check back with you guys in uh, one minute so you see uh, here I'm beginning the second coat and the second coat what I did was sort of a, a medium wet coat and then I did what they call a drop coat which is where you pull the gun uh, back a little bit further away and you let it kind of flow out a little bit more or a little bit longer rather you move a little slower with your uh, motion and you kind of just want the metallic to fall but you want the first uh, or the second coat rather to fall medium wet so that it's wet when that metallic falls so that it doesn't kind of land dry and I did run into a little bit of an issue with that on the actual roof. Um, I kind of had my metallic um, landing dry just because it took me time with the hoses tangling up to get around to the other side of the car. I had some difficulty. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the time lapse, but I did have some issues trying to move around in the booth there. It was uh, difficult, but I think I already mentioned that. But I had all my handles over there, which was quite tedious to do all that stuff, but... I ended up uh, painting them first with it propped open and then uh, after uh, the second coat I left it shut and they all turned out pretty good. But uh, yeah, so this second and third coat I ended up dipping into, uh, just dipping into the second gallon of paint that I mixed. So one gallon was not quite enough to do what uh, all the parts I have here and maybe I laid it down really thick but I just wanted to make sure that I had really good coverage. I've had issues in the past with coverage. And I just wanted to make sure that I had no issues. And I definitely laid a ton of paint down. And, uh, you know, you can very, very clearly uh, not see any primer through the paint. That's for sure. It's very good. It's nice and covered. But, yeah, that is about it for this second coat of base. Um, second and third coat is my drop coat for the metallic. That's only a thing that you have to do on metallics. You have to do it on regular colors, I guess. Um, so I guess most regular colors two coats is enough to cover drop coat is just to orient the metallic so that it uh, pops nicely and I've yet to see this car in the sun but I cannot wait to see it in the sun you guys will see it at the end of this video I figure I can narrate um, this stuff just to make it maybe a bit more interesting than some music because there is a little bit to be learned here but this time lapse is going to end in a few seconds so uh, we'll move to the next So this here is me beginning my clear coat stage and I decided that I would do a just a medium coat just like a nice closed coat and uh, the idea here is to make sure that you hit every spot and you don't leave anything dry because if you do then the uh, second coat will lay on kind of bumpy so I try to do my best to uh, get a nice closed coat 
everywhere. I started on all the other parts just to kind of get a feel for the way everything was spraying and uh, the conditions and everything. It seemed like it was doing well. I had the uh, gun at like at 28 or 29 PSI and full full on fluid and uh, tried to stay about four to six inches away from the part. Sometimes I get a little far away at times, but um, I didn't really have too many problems. Uh, it's all just kind of a feel thing. You get a feel for the way the paint's going down, and then uh, you got to just go with that. And uh, yeah, so things went pretty well uh, first coat wise. Um, I had to keep, you know, keep filling up the gun. Got a little tangled in the hoses like usual, but not too bad. I was uh, happy with the first coat but still kind of patchy and didn't look the best but that's just kind of a first coat you gotta make sure that uh, you don't go too heavy because this is easy to make runs uh, in this kind of scenario but yeah so that was uh, pretty much it for the first coat In the second coat, we ended up going on a little bit thicker, and uh, you can go pretty heavy on this coat. You slow down the speed of the gun, um, just the way your hand moves, and you can lay on way more paint uh, just because it's got that surface to stick to, which um, it kind of holds it better than if you just slap it over the base coat really thick. So you put that first coat and let it tack to where it's uh, not stringy, and then you go ahead and you lay it down thick on the second coat here like I did. And uh, yeah, it seems to bond really well. I only had just a couple of baby, baby little runs, nothing crazy. I'll be able to sand those out, um, and nobody will even know. But luckily, they were in areas that are uh, super inconspicuous. But uh, yeah, so I'm not a professional, but just doing this in my garage, I was able to manage. It's really tough to uh, spray a roof like that. It's my first time doing anything like uh, that far away. I've never done a roof before, so. Definitely an interesting process there to do the roof, but it did turn out pretty good. It'll be good after a wet sand and buff. Like I said, it ended up a bit hazy, but uh, that's quite all right. I'm very happy with the results here on this, uh, this here second coat, and I did end up doing a third coat, but that, that third coat is uh, just basically the same thing as this, just another medium wet coat. I really laid it down good on all the horizontal surfaces because I really want those to be ultra flat like the hood, roof, and, and trunk uh, as well as when I paint the spoiler and stuff. I want that stuff to just be super flat and glossy. Um, so that's the plan. But uh, this is pretty much it for the clear. And I'm going to go ahead and jump to after this thing is all done. And uh, I'll show you guys what it looks like. Alright guys, so it is the following morning. I don't have much GoPro battery, I gotta go charge them. I used all of them doing time lapses last night. I was up till like four in the morning painting this car. But totally, totally, 100% worth it, guys. It came out awesome. It came out so good. Um, like, I couldn't have hoped for it to come out this good. It just looks really awesome. Like, I don't know, hopefully the uh, camera is doing it justice. Uh, I'm sure it looks better on camera than it does in person, but it looks wet, guys. Yeah, the uh, GoPro is dying currently, so I'm gonna go get some more batteries and I'll show you guys some of the untaping process, unmasking the car. But uh, yeah, from here, the only thing I really have left to do is a nice wet sand and a buff, which, you know, I'm gonna do Right after I go ahead and uh, untape it, I might get started on that today. We'll see uh, if I wait till later, maybe everything should be dry enough or cured enough rather. Um, but everything came out really good. The roof is a little bit hazy. It's a little bit uh, patchy just because I kind of lost my wet edge on the when I was coming around the other side. But all that should wet sand out. Um, the hood looks really good. There's a couple of hazy spots as well. but. Like I said, all that should just wet sand out. I went ahead and did three coats of clear on everything. So I should be able to wet sand just about everything and get it to be ultra flat 
and uh, then I'll be able to buff it, make it shine. So I'm really pumped guys. I only had like a couple of issues, a couple of bugs in the paint, which like I said, a wet sand out. And then I had one run over there uh, on one of the fenders. That's the only run I had on the whole job as far as I know. Might find more, but it looks really clean. This is one of the best jobs that I've sprayed, especially for being such a big job. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Um, and I'll show you guys more. Let me go get some more batteries. I can't wait to reassemble this car, guys. I'm so pumped. It's been such a long time since I, uh, you know, felt this content with a paint job. So pretty happy. Um, overall, really good. Really pumped. I uh, just got to make it showroom quality now with the, uh, the wet sand and buff. We'll be good to go. Here is the car with everything removed. All the tape is off. This thing is back to uh, you know looking like it's gonna look once we get it all put back together. No masking on it, so you can tell how everything's gonna look. And it looks really awesome, guys. I'm really pumped. I've been working on this car and the bodywork for so long. Um, it's finally paid off. Finally paid off. You know, I can finally just have something that I'm proud of, something that I can wash and wax and, uh, you know, have it look decent because I've never, never really had anything with this clean of a paint job, so pretty excited. I'm going to go ahead and um, keep going. I put the uh, trunk piece back on here, so that looks pretty good. This whole thing's gonna be so nice, guys, once I wet sand and buff. I mean, if you think it looks good now, it's just like not even close to what it's gonna look like after it's done. I got so much clear on here that I'm gonna be able to go nice and flat. So it should be really awesome. Only thing that I wanna do now is uh, work on maybe putting a few things back together. I think I wanna paint the rest of the stuff before I put the lips on uh, to the bumpers, before I put the bumpers on. That way everything will be um, you know, that's just the best way to do it in my opinion. I don't want to rush anything, but uh, maybe later today, it depends on um, how I'm feeling. I might try to fit the fenders on, maybe put a little bit of tape on it and fit it on, or maybe I'll wait till tomorrow morning. Not really sure. Um, I want to do something. I want to put it back together. You know, I just want to see this thing uh, whole again, but I think maybe I'll just cap it off here and I'm going to go make a, a nice YouTube video. I'm going to edit this video because it's been a while and you guys deserve a video and this is what I've been up to. I've been really pushing to get this thing done and we're getting there. We're on the home stretch. We just got skirts and lips and stuff and grills and, and spoilers and all those accessories to paint and then once we do all that, we'll get all that mounted and our pillars too, get them all painted and this thing's going to be so sweet. We got to do all the trim and black. It's I mean, I got work left for sure, but it just... You know, it gives me more motivation to keep it going, and uh, it gives me something that I can polish up and make look nice. Um, now that I got something with a little bit of gloss on it, so even if there's no lips and skirts and it's unfinished, at least it looks like I'm getting somewhere and not just a primed up car. So thanks for watching, guys. This is a really cool, important milestone for me. Um, I've been wanting to get here for a long time, and we are finally to this point. So I'm pumped, and hopefully you guys like the color. I really love this color. I think it's super cool. And uh, yeah, I'm glad that I went with it. Very awesome. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Peace out. Stay tuned. Lots more to come with this car.